I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Titans issue number nine. Will Bumblebee be able to keep her newfound powers, or does Simon have other plans for her? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Okay, then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, we discovered that the Meta Human Resources group that Mal Duncan and his wife had gone to to try and get their powers taken away from them was actually headed up by the Fearsome Five, a group of old school teens. Titans villains that Nightwing and everyone else remember because they had, well, their memories restored to them thanks to Wally. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably thought a big fight was soon to break out, only they go the other direction on this. The Five say they've turned over a new leaf, they've completely reformed themselves, and are using the MetaHuman Outreach Center to actually help people who are afflicted by their powers. In fact, the group of former bad guys claim to practice what they preach, too, having used their pooled abilities to take away most of their own powers, minus Gizmo and Simon, of course. Lilith, the resident psychic of the Titans, uses her powers to poke around inside the bad guys' heads, and shockingly, she finds no lie in them. Then again, Simon is a super powerful telepath in his own right and could easily have messed with her head, but as it stands right now, the Titans don't really have a leg to stand on, so they leave with Mal and his wife. The interesting thing, though, is that Bumblebee is totally torn up about all of this, mainly because, you know, she was that close to actual supervillains who have tried to kill her husband in the past, but moreover than that, she's conflicted about her own abilities because because she really likes her power. She really likes being Bumblebee and flying around, and I mean, who wouldn't, right? The topic of conversation then turns to second chances. Obviously, Roy Harper has a lot to say on this, given his history as a drug addict who reformed and saw the light again. As he puts it, yeah, they should give the Fearsome Five a chance if they are honest about turning over a new leaf, but you know what? From personal experience, no one turns over a new leaf that quickly. They agree that they probably shouldn't go stomping right into the Fearsome Five's offices and messing up the place. Instead, they decide to be a little bit more subtle with it, stake out the building and see what they can find all stealth-like. And I mean, when you have one guy who is skilled in the arts of break and enter because he was taught by Batman like Nightwing and another guy who can move so fast the eye can't actually catch him, being subtle and staking out is super easy and fun too. It's when our team actually gets into the deep inner sanctum of the MetaHuman Outreach Center do they really start to see all the dirt that they're up to here. It would seem that making powers just go away is a lot harder than it seems. In fact, what this group seems to be doing is a lot closer to taking powers from one party and giving it to another. This would reasonably explain the power-mad giant that the Titans fought in the opening of this arc and why Mammoth is ready to move heaven and earth to make sure they can't escape the inner sanctum. Now with Nightwing and Flash cut off from the rest of the team, everyone else has to rush on in to make the save, especially Bumblebee who feels personally responsible for getting the team involved in this in the first place. She too leaves to help out, leaving her husband behind. Titans number five was an interesting interesting little conclusion to this ongoing arc. I love the idea of classic Titans villains maybe not really being villains anymore, but I mean, come on, we all knew where this story was going, didn't we? I also get the strong feeling by the end of this arc, either Duncan or Bumblebee are going to end up joining the team as official members, which, you know, would be a nice way to bring it all full circle. There's also a nice bit of stuff happening in the background with Simon. We see him talking to a bunch of creepy dudes in robes that I do believe might actually be the Church of Blood. More classic Titan villains and perhaps even some connection to what will be going down in the Lazarus contract event crossover once that hits. This issue was a little slow in spots, but I get the feeling it's really going to pick up near the tail end. Overall, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7 out of 10. Well, there you have it, everybody. Another Titans video on the books. And if you like that video, please, why not check out some of the other great videos I have on offer on the channel? And if you want to keep up to date on all the new videos I got coming down the pipeline, then as always, I would recommend you follow me on social media. I got Instagram, I got Twitter, I got Facebook, and you can find all of those down in the description. Like comic podcasts? Of course you like comic podcasts. I should know I'm on more than my fair share of them. You can find links to the comic multiverse and the weekly poll down there in the description as well. Maybe exclusive content and helping the channel grow is your thing. If so, I might recommend going by my Patreon page and seeing what's happening over there. Until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you in the next video.